Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse the Planner is here. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been maybe in a store, you saw somebody looking at a can, good or something like that, and they keep looking, and they're looking for the shelf life? How long before they have to throw it away? This is a sermon that you're going to enjoy. This is only part one. You do not have a shelf life. And I love this message. As believers in Jesus Christ, you and I have no expiration dates. Why? Because we are timeless beings. Christ in us, the hope of glory. You don't have a shelf life. So call a friend, tell them to turn that television on. They're going to enjoy this message. They're going to find themselves in it. And this is part one of a message entitled, You Do Not Have a Shelf Life. Would you go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15? The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want to read some words that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. This church had a lot of problems and things of that nature because number one, you had to have a lot of courage to be a Christian because in those days they would kill you. Nero accused the Christians of burning Rome. They became arsonists, so he decided to burn them all and kill them all. See, the persecution of the Christian people. It was, it was amazing, you know, how many people have been, the Christian world and the Christian doctrine has been accused for, for hundreds and thousands of years. Yet it is a gospel of love. It really is. It, it's, it's the only religion that I know of that serves one, you know, uh, serves a God that, that you can come boldly to the throne of grace with a petition and a supplication. Right. It's the only one I know of that has a grace beyond human reasoning that, uh, you know, that God would not only forgive your sin, but it would expunge your record. Yes. That it never, ever happened. That's amazing to me. Christianity. Uh, it was a miracle birth and a miracle resurrection. Now, Paul was writing the church there in Corinth, and, and he was talking to them about the resurrection that was coming up. And I want to read in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, so in other words, if you're born again, you should be changed. So you shouldn't be wanting to do what the world does. Because of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Change person, see. In other words, that doesn't mean the devil won't try to tempt you in any way, shape, or form. But that's not, that's not, that's not your life no more. You have been changed. He's telling them about that. And then he, he says in verse 52, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now, let me explain the time frame of a twinkling of, a, of an eye. Everyone look at me. Blink your eye right now. It took 16 twinkles to do that. That's how fast God's going to come and resurrect and bring us into his phenomenal glory. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we already have victory for what Satan's going to do. What is done? See, in other words, God's always ahead of you. And then this verse is where I want to get to, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Notice these four words here, steadfast, unmovable. Notice that. And the other words, always abounding. And then labor, not in vain in the Lord. See, a lot of people do labor in themselves, but I'm talking about in the Lord. That's why churches close. A lot of people did labor in themselves. Or well, they may have an excuse. We all not giving enough, so we're going somewhere else. That's sad, isn't it? See, they didn't labor in the law. So I want to deal with these, these few words here. I want to deal with steadfast and unmovable, which is number one means duty. Write that down. We have a duty. When we built this church, we did it out of duty. You know, if you remember what uh, Queen Elizabeth saying that whether my life would be long or short, how she says short, when she was real young, only 26 years old. I will do my duty to this nation, and she did. And I, I think that's the biggest funeral I've ever seen in my life, and it's going on now. You know what I'm saying? And the people standing in line for 
12 to 17 hours just to pay homage. That's pretty good. And a lot of people don't know about, about Queen Elizabeth II. She was a very religious person. She loved the Lord with all her heart. Someone asked her one time, what would you do if Jesus came? She said, I would lay my crown at his feet. Well, that's a phenomenal statement. Isn't that something? Think about that. So in other words, steadfast, immovable is duty. Then he said, always abounding. That's motive. So you must have duty, you must have motive. Notice that's how we built this church, with duty and with motive. We have a motive of why we do that. And then it says, labor not in vain, which means the work. In other words, you have duty. Notice that, you know, you have duty. Two, you have motive. And three, you have work. So I want to deal with that. Now, a lot of people, I don't know why, they think they're finished. The title of my sermon today is you do not have a shelf life. <laughs> you do not have a shelf life. You know, if you look at stuff and go in the grocery store, they got a shelf life. They give you a date when it's no good anymore. Or you should throw it away. See, the body of Christ doesn't have a shelf life. Oh, I'm preaching better than you shouting right now. So 25 years, did Kathy, did, when Kathy said, well, let's have another 25 years, you think she's kidding? No, we'll not have a shelf life. See, a shelf life means that it's finished to throw it away. No, we never lose what God has ordained. See, you do not have a shelf life. So a lot of people ask my time, when are you going to retire? <laughs> I don't have a shelf life. I'll do this till Jesus come or to the last breath of my body. It doesn't make any difference. And then I really start preaching in the, in the eternity of eternities. Because then I can travel the universe Amen. without a jet. Amen. That I travel by the speed of thought Amen. with no carbon footprint Amen. in any way, shape, or form. So I want to talk today about you do not have a shelf life, and that's done by duty, done by motive, and done by work. So write this down if you're taking notes. Now let's start with the word steadfast. Let me read that scripture again. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable. Steadfast, write this down, steadfast is a ring of confidence in it. Why? Because it literally means seated or settled. So when you're steadfast, you're settled, you're seated. You see, that's why many of you are still here when we started out all those years ago. I couldn't change Kathy's mind to build this building. Because she was settled. She was steadfast, immovable. See, that was that duty. The duty was far beyond what I would think. My duty was to go to the world. Her duty was to build this church and to become the pastor of it. See, duty, steadfast, this means seated, settled. Now, what if it's settled, then it's done. Let me say it again. Steadfast has a ring of confidence in it because it means literally something that is seated or settled. See what I'm saying? So write this down. If you have a belief, hold to it. If you have a belief, hold to it. Do not let it escape because it implies an unmovable attitude. Many people told me not to build it. Many people told me we couldn't build it, but we had a belief of duty to God and to, and to this local community. If you have a belief, hold to it. Do not let it escape because it implies an unmovable attitude. Yet many people, they, cru they crucified it. Some split the church, had all kinds of things. You know, a a Hurricane uh, Katrina, we had 1,800 people in this building. We lost 900 in one day. 900 in one day. Isn't that something? That is amazing to me. And they didn't come back. I, mean, I, see, I still know where they are because I see them all over the world where I go preach the gospel. They still call Covenant Church their local church, their church, even though they're in Oregon, even though they're in California, they're in New York, and they're in Boston, and my God, Florida, and Texas, and just all over the place. Well, well, you know, but you see, we could have left, but we didn't. Why? Because we're steadfast. We're unmovable. That's why we're celebrating this 25-year anniversary, and the 50th anniversary, and the 150th anniversary. <laughs> And then we're going to, watch it, and the church doesn't leave, then shut down if we all go to heaven because we're going we're gonna to celebrate it there because who is the church? We are. So let me say it again. If you have a belief, and we do, hold to it and do not let it go or let it escape because it implies an unmovable attitude. So we made up our mind. But people said it costs so much. Yeah, but he didn't ask us to pay for it. He asked us to believe for it. So when we begin to believe for it, the Lord more than paid for it in every area. You can't touch a thing in here that's not paid for. Through the power of Jesus Christ, you see. Why? And, it, and it, it, you know, things may get old, but we don't get old. I'm talking about our spirit. Unmovable. 
steadfast. See, I mean, you know, I've had many opportunities to fail. I don't take any. I mean, I've been rawly criticized by ABC, CBS, NBC. My, I got all over the world, but I don't change. Why? Because I have a belief. I hold on to it. I'm steadfast in my belief. I'm steadfast in healing. I'm steadfast in tithing. I'm steadfast in prosperity. I don't care what they say because, you see, I'm unmovable. Why? Because I have a belief, and that belief keeps me in, in, in an unmovable attitude. See, let me read the, read the point again. If you have a belief, hold to it and do not let it escape. Why? Because it implies an unmovable attitude. Well, but just you don't get discouraged. No, steadfast has a confidence in it. It means seated and settled, so I'm settled. No matter what happens, they can do whatever. See, even some people think they fail. You didn't fail. It may not have come to pass, but you know what? It'll come to pass after your death. You see, because they thought Jesus failed. All the disciples left him. Everything I see, they let, they let loose of their belief. But Jesus did not. He said, I'll be back in three days to celebrate. You, as you see me come down, you will see me go up. Think about that. My Lord, born of a virgin. That makes no sense, but that's all right. It still happened. He was steadfast, immovable. Notice that. That is duty. Write this down. People don't become martyrs for opinions. They become martyrs for convictions. You see, people don't become martyrs for opinions. My, my opinions don't mean nothing, neither is yours. But your convictions means everything who you are, spiritually, physically, and financially. I had a conviction that we would pay this thing debt-free. A complete conviction, and I wouldn't change, even though the architect said you can't do it, even though uh, Whitney Bank said you can't do it, even though Hibernia Bank said you couldn't do it, even though American Bank said you couldn't do it. See, that was their opinions. Opinions are transitory forms of thought floating on the ocean of life. They change with every way, but when you got a conviction, you know in whom you have believed and you're persuaded that he's able to keep that which you commit to him. And I committed my life and the works of my life to his work to his love. Amen. Now you see, that is duty in every area of my life. Well, what happens when you get tired? Well, I, I'll take a nap if I can. And if I don't, I just go through, the nap, go through the tiredness. You see, and when you understand that, see, people don't become martyrs for opinions, but for convictions. That's why I believe in this word of God no matter what happens in life. See, because I know, not believe. I, I quit believing years ago. See, and I start knowing, and it's such a wonderful thing. Because death and life's in the power of my tongue. So I'm not concerned how long I live. If, you know, if Jesus died. Why? Because I decree life. You'll know when I'm finished. You'll know exactly when I'm finished. I'll just tell you. And just, just like I say about living in every area. Because you see, I, I have a conviction about the word of God. I have a conviction about prosperity. And it's not because it's just money. It's more than that. It's wonderful to be healthy and wealthy. I have both. Somebody shout somebody. Do you see, do you're bragging. No, I'm not bragging. My God, I, I'm telling you, I don't have a shelf life. Amen. There's no expir expiration date on me. Dreams have no expiration dates. Amen. Do you see it in any way, shape, or form? Time means nothing to me. I'm a timeless being. I'm eternal in every area of my life. Do you see what I'm saying? See, now that's a conviction. See, that's not just an opinion. People can sway your opinion, change your mind, but your conviction should never be changed. See, that's what it means to be steadfast and immovable. That's why this church is still here. It wasn't easy. I was the first one to come in here when Hurricane Ida hit. It wasn't fun. It was discouraging to see the, all this stuff hanging down. Water here, busted hole, and all kinds of stuff. But you know what? God sent me Bobby Rodriguez. Glory to God, hallelujah. Bobby just showed up at my house. Bobby, yeah, give him a hand clap. He, what a blessing. Bobby, he, I said, Bobby, can you fix it? He said, yeah, I can. I said, good enough. See, God always sends you somebody to help you. God sent me Rick to take care of the, uh, uh, of the house with all that, uh, that, what they call that big roof and everything. I mean, it was just amazing in every area. God sent me my, 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 my employees. Do you realize how hard, if you want to think pressure in the natural, how much pressure it is when the whole dead gum world shuts down on the COVID, and yet I got all these people looking at me because they got to pay their house notes, they got to pay their car notes, they got to do all, they got to have a job, and a lot of people are laying off everybody, shutting them down. We never even thought about that. Why? Because we're steadfast, we're immovable. See, we know in whom we have belief. So I needed them and they needed me. And God gave me a generator that I could keep working. And God gave me favor with the governor. Hallelujah. That we could keep the church open. Yes. 
See what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, it, it, people, you know it's very hard. It, it, a lot of people think it's very hard to preach with nobody here. I've done it for years. I'm still in front of a camera just spit flying in a soul other than the person behind the camera. And they ain't listening. They're looking at, what they, they're looking at me, trying to make sure the shot's right. You see what I'm saying? See, that's what I mean by conviction. See, I made it my, when I married Kathy, I said, this is till death do us part. Death do us part. Makes no difference how old she is. Because <laughs> she don't look old. She just turned 70. She's looking pretty good. <laughs> she, sure, she sure got the bling on, and I caused that to happen, my hallelujah. Well, I just wanted to be a blessing. See, conviction. Made up our mind. Gave all our money away when we got born again. Became poor. I mean, Jody's piggy bank money. Twice. First time, a lot of money. Easy. Baby Christian. Babies don't get disturbed. Second time, matured Christian. Financed or mortgaged the house. Financed the car. Give, on, give me all your money. Oh, Jesus, help me. First thing I thought of, but I didn't say it. Why? Conviction. Mm-mm. How am I going to pay this house no? How am I going to pay this car no? I never said it. Say, take no thought saying and I said, I'm yours to command. Walked into Kathy and said, God just told me to give all our money away again. She said, let's do it. I wanted to say, no, let's don't do it. Then I would say, it's that woman that thou gavest me that does not want me to do it. But see, she said, let's do it. Two of us agreed. We did. And I walked back out that house. I'll never forget that. And I had my Abraham moment that day. It was also in the King James language. Because thou hast done this, Jesse, and have given me all that thou hast, I will bless everything you put your hand on. I will honor you all the days of your life. You will be wealthy. You will be healthy. No matter what they say, I will put a guard around you. I accept it. And that has happened, ladies and gentlemen. From the United States government to the local government, my God, to the state government coming at me, to everything you could think of, and yet I'm still here. Yes. You see, opinions, people don't become martyrs for opinions. They become martyrs because of convictions. And you thought, well, they got killed. That was failure. No, that was foundation. Oh, you missed that. Some of y'all didn't get that, what I just said. See, that's foundation. We stand on the foundation of the blood of the first church, glory to God, that cannot be broken. Let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. What are your convictions in life? And how strong are they? I'm not talking about your opinions. I'm talking about your convictions. Listen, your convictions say who you are in every area of your life. And when you know in whom you have believed, the past tense, and who you are as God's eternal child, your future is limitless. Now think about that for a minute. Because, see, because of my convictions, that's why I'm here today. Not because of my opinion that I wanted to go on television 47 years ago. No, my conviction was to listen to God and go on television and to go on every available outlet that I could put the gospel on. Let me tell you something. And people said, man, how long are you going to keep preaching? Till Jesus comes or go by the way of the grave. Why not? Remember, you and I don't have a shelf life in Christ. And I mean that sincerely. And as Christians... We have a duty to be steadfast, unmovable in the Lord, which means I do not move. When I believe something and I know what the Word of God has to say, I have a conviction about it. And I'm going to preach. If it makes somebody mad, I don't, mean to, I don't want to make them mad by any means. But I mean the Word of God is, is a convicting power. And you have to stay with what you believe. I know in whom I have believed. I'm persuaded he's able to keep what I give to him this day. Oh, I like that. I got a wonderful question from a man named Jeremy. He says this, thank you for teaching me how to fellowship with the Lord. Do you remember the, way, the very first conversation you had and how you recognized his voice? Yes, Jeremy. I was spot ready to pray and I heard this. Hello, Jesse. I thought, whoa. I, I turned around, I looked around, I said, whoa, who's somebody in the room? Yeah, I am, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's have a conversation. First time in my life, because I would always go, oh, gee, you know, praying and nothing wrong with praying. I believe in prayer. But this was conversation. And we just started talking, and it was most a wonderful time. How do you know his voice? My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they do not follow. So now, my God, I have way more conversations with Lord, 
with the Lord Jesus Christ than I do with prayers, and I pray. But I like them conversations. They are blessings. Stay right there. I'll be back in just a moment. I want to show you some wonderful things that are happening. So watch this and be blessed. Think of that. That's the words of Jesus. See, Justin Plans Ministries has one driving passion. One thing we ask in Jesus' name to be empowered and equipped above and beyond to effectively share God's message of salvation with the entire world. We want everyone to have an opportunity to know the real Jesus. Approachable, personable, compassionate, and full of joy. That's the truth that we put on full display and invite countless others to know for themselves. We know he'll do everything and more. Why? Because we believe it, leading us to do the impossible for his glory. God called me to go. He said, go ye and I go. And sent people to link up in faith with the vision. That's you sending me to do the work. We are running further and faster than ever, infused with supernatural energy, shining the light of the gospel, seizing every divine opportunity. We're advancing and cutting through barriers to reach people right where they are. What shall I do for thee? Ask God for something unbelievable, something impossible. And you know what God will do? He'll walk off that throne and go get that thing for you. that God wants you to thrive, prosper, and achieve everything He's called you to do? Well, in my book, Suited for Success, I'm going to show you how to be fully equipped with all the essentials that you need to live a victorious and prosperous life. Your victory has already been settled. You can and will accomplish every dream God put in your heart. Suited for Success. Order your copy at JDM.org today. I love our June offer today. It's entitled Suited for Success by my wife, Kathy the Planners. Have you got your copy yet? People are calling me and saying, man, this thing is good. How do I get this? Go to jdm.org and get your copy today. I'm telling you, man, Kathy wrote a good book, Suited for Success. Nice picture too, isn't it? <laughs> Praise God. What a blessing. I'm telling you, not only women, men are getting this. Say, you know what? I'm going to be suited up for success. Go to jdm.org and you can get this thing. You will be blessed by it. I am so excited about what's about ready to happen here. I believe in going in the world and preaching the gospel to every creature. And a lot of times COVID shut everything down, but no more. Ladies and gentlemen, this week I'm going to Verona, Italy. Then I'm going to Denmark. Then I'm going to Switzerland. Lord Jesus, I mean, I am flying. We're going to have a great time in the Lord, so I want to see you there, all those countries. Come, by God, well, how do I know more about it? To get all the information, all you got to do is go to our meeting page at jdm.org. That's where all my meetings are. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord. And I mean that sincerely. Listen, we do not have a shelf life. I want to encourage you today that this message will minister to you greatly. You have a belief, so hold on to it no matter what anybody says. Now, this is only part one. Part two is coming next week. It is a blessing of the Lord. Partners, I want to thank you for supporting this ministry for 47 years. We have never had a financial deficit. Why is that? Because we don't have a shelf life. 
and you don't have a shelf life. We understand the covenant of God, and we just we keep giving, we keep receiving, we keep sowing, we keep reaping, reaping. I mean, it just happens all the time because God's word is real. I mean that sincerely. We have some great projects on the table, and we're getting them out as fast as we can. Your faithful financial support is so greatly appreciated. You've heard me say it so many times. For every dollar given this ministry, I want a soul into the kingdom, and I endeavor to do that all the time. Don't you ever get tired? Yeah, I may get tired a little bit, but I don't have a shelf life. I just take a nap. Praise God. And not a long one. I like what they call them power naps. Glory. They got, I get my body refreshed, and I, I get my Holy Ghost refreshed inside me too. Don't miss next week. You do not have a shelf life. Part two coming next week. I hope you enjoyed it today. Partners, thank you for sending in your faithful financial support. See you soon. Bye-bye. Every one of you have a vision. Everything you see was once a vision of someone or a dream. As our June partner offered today, we have a sermon entitled, You Do Not Have a Shelf Life. As a Christian, time doesn't matter. And as believers in Jesus Christ, you and I have no expiration date. We are timeless beings. Order it today at jdm.org. And guess what? You won't have a shelf life. You'll quit looking at the number because there are no numbers. Order it today, jdm.org. Be filled with the presence of God as you watch Jesse and Kathy's anointed messages of faith. Receive free instant access to these powerful teachings today by downloading the JDM app. You will be able to stream hundreds of sermons on your smart TV, your web browser, and any mobile device. You will also have access to our weekly TV show and much more. Download the JDM app today. Available on Google Play, the Apple Store, Roku TV, and more. I believe that God has placed within each one of us a deep desire to live a better life. Whether it's a life free from pain, fear, or lack of any kind, God wants to bring that to pass for you. In my book, You Are Designed for Glorious Living, you'll discover how to achieve the better life God has for you. You know, long before you took your first breath, God had designs on you for glorious living. You are designed for glorious living. Available at JDM.org always abounding. That's motive. Why do you do what you do? Because I want to abound. I know how to abase and I know how to abound. And I make no excuses for both of them. I can sleep in the finest homes and the finest hotels in the world, and yet I can sleep in a rat hole. It don't make no difference to me. Why? Because I'm not sleeping by myself. You mean you got Catherine? No, I got God with me.